Kevin De Bruyne dazzles for Belgium at Euro 2020. The Netherlands are heading into the last 16. Spurs have a managerial U-turn. Real Madrid rejects an offer for Rafael Varane and a transfer roundup all coming up on today's One Football Daily News. As I'm your host, Angelina Kelly, let's get into it. First up on last night, Belgium managed to secure their spot in the last 16 of Euro 2020 as they got a 2-1 victory over Denmark. It was, of course, an emotional evening for the 25,000 fans in the stadium in Copenhagen who all pay tribute to Christian Eriksen, who is recovering from cardiac arrest. Also, in the 10th minute of the game, they actually stopped play and had a round of applause for the player. Now, for Belgium, this game was definitely not an easy one. In fact, in the first half, they were a shadow of the team that we're actually used to seeing. Denmark, of course, were up within 99 seconds, actually the second fastest goal in the European Championships. And actually, they probably could have been up by a little bit more than that. And all this meant was that at halftime, Roberto Martinez had to make some changes and fast. And one of those changes was Kevin De Bruyne and what a difference he made. De Bruyne put his name in lights last night as he made his first appearance since the Champions League final in May, where he did, of course, suffer a fractured nose and eye socket. Not only did he set up the equaliser with a brilliant, unselfish pass to Thorgan Hazard, basically set in the ball upon a plate for him but he then of course scored the winner with some help actually from Eden Hazard who also came on as a substitute. What this means is that Hazard and De Bruyne have now set up more goals in major tournaments since 2014 than any other European players and I think that their impact in the game last night really does just demonstrate how big players in big games sometimes really do make the difference. The fact that De Bruyne was so composed, so relaxed despite the fact that Belgium were arguably in a little bit of trouble really does show what a special player he was. Also Romelu Lukaku although he he didn't get on the score sheet, had a great game. He actually managed to get himself a Man of the Match award. For Denmark, of course, like I say, it was an emotional night, but they did manage to respond really well to Belgium by still pressing players forward. And they actually did have a few chances at getting an equaliser, especially with Martin Braithwaite's chance. But big congratulations to Belgium. And like I say, they are into the knockout phases. Another team that have reached the knockout phases is the Netherlands, who got a 2-0 victory over Austria. This is the first time that they entered this period of a competition since 2008. And I think Netherlands fans can breathe a sigh of relief that return to a major competition has not been a if anything, it's been pretty impressive. In their second game of the tournament, the Dutch looked a lot more composed and at ease than they did against the Ukraine, especially defensively, with the return of Matthijs de Ligt, who was out with a groin injury. And their manager, De Boer, even commented on this and said there were definitely improvements. For the manager, Frank De Boer, I think he can maybe feel a little bit vindicated. He has been getting a lot of heat for his role with the national team, especially with his 5-3-2 formation. But he's kept the formation and it's worked out for him as, like I say, they're through to the next round of the competition. The formation has been great for one player in particular, in Denzel Dumfries. He has now scored in his first two European Championship games. The only other Dutch player to have done that is actually Ruud van Nistelrooy. He had a great game and he's almost functioning as more of a right forward at times when he does get the chances. And it's been great to see. He's even said to the media that the tournament was starting to look like a childhood dream come true. However, they've still got a bit of a way to go yet. Meanwhile, for Austria, it wasn't their night and things aren't completely over for them. They do still have to face the Ukraine. But meanwhile, for the Netherlands, like I say, I've been pretty impressed with them and the fact that their manager has even stated that we've not seen the best of this team yet. You consider the performance of the likes of Daniel Marlon, Memphis Depay. I am really excited to see what they bring to the next round of the competition. The other game in the group was, of course, the Ukraine versus North Macedonia. The Ukraine managed to get a 2-1 victory against the side. And what this means for North Macedonia, unfortunately, is they are the first team to bow out of the competition. But do not forget, you can find more Euro content, not only on the OneFootball app, but the Volkswagen One Hub as well. So make sure you check them out. And if you're watching on YouTube, the links are right beneath this video. Meanwhile, Tottenham's hunt for a new manager has taken another twist and another turn, as according to the BBC, their talks with Paolo Fonseca about making him their new manager have completely broken down. The Portuguese manager was set to be taking over at Spurs, especially after their new football managing director, Fabio Panatici, did name him as his number one target, but seemingly that is no more. According to the BBC, Fonseca is completely stunned by this. Apparently, negotiations and talks were that far advanced that he was actually preparing for the new season and looking at signings. And what this means is that he just joins the list of managers that have been in talks about managing Spurs. Of course, there was Antonio Conte, even Zinedine Zidane was rumoured 
rumoured with the job, and of course they allegedly did try to lure back their former manager, Mauricio Pochettino. However, who is now actually in the mix for this Spurs job? So according to reports from Goal, Gennaro Gattuso is now in the mix. So of course, he was managing Napoli two days after he left the club. He then joined Fiorentina. He's now left Fiorentina after just 23 days as manager, apparently due to some disagreements about transfers. And now apparently he is in talks about the Spurs job. So Fonseca out, Gattuso in? No, it is not that simple as now this morning, there has been even more news on this situation. And despite the fact that Spurs have allegedly spoken to Gattuso, according to The Athletic, they have decided that he is actually not the man for the job and he will not be taking over at Spurs. And all this means is that the search for their new manager, it just continues. Next up, and of course yesterday, Sergio Ramos gave a very emotional press conference talking about how he will be departing from Real Madrid. However, there could be another defender departing in Rafael Varane. And as Matt stated on yesterday's Daily, there have been rumours that Real Madrid are willing to offer Varane a new contract. However, there are some clubs that are interested that will not go down without a fight. And one of them is actually Manchester United. So according to the Manchester Evening News, the club did put in an offer for Varane of around £50 million. This, of course, was rejected as the club are allegedly holding out for more around 80 million. Of course, Manchester United have been in the market for a new centre back for what seems like a lifetime now, but they're really going to have to up their game, as with the likes of PSG waiting in the wings, who could probably provide Real Madrid with that £80 million price tag. I'm not too sure if Iran will be wearing a red shirt next season. Now, like we've talked about on the Daily News before, it does seem like Real Madrid are reportedly willing to offer him a new contract. However, they could be swayed, as of course, Varan is displaying his talents for France at Euro 2020. Pair this with their financial issues, and if Varane's value does rise, they could maybe be convinced. However, of course, they do have David Alaba as a centre-back for the club with Ramos departing. But if they lost Varane as well, this would mean that they only had Nacho Fernandes and Edo Militao ready to pair up with Alaba. Both great players, but I'm not too sure if I could see them starting week in, week out for Real Madrid. So I just really think that Real Madrid are going to have to keep Varane. He is one of the players that they have got to hold on to this summer. And finally, we come to our transfer roundup. This is where I take a look at some of the other news and transfers going on in the footballing world. And first off, Brazil have continued their great start to Copa America as they got a 4-0 victory over Peru. Neymar was on the score sheet, and this means that he is now just nine goals away from equaling Pele's record of 77 goals for his national team. Meanwhile, Colombia were held to a 0-0 draw with Venezuela, and Colombia player Luis Diaz did end up getting a red card in the latter stages of the game. Football Insider have stated that Conor Cody could be Rafa Benitez's first signing if he does make the move to Everton as manager. Wolves are reportedly considering signing Diego Costa, who has been a free agent since his departure from Atletico Madrid in December 2020. And finally, reports state that Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp is very interested in Real Sociedad and Sweden player Alexander Isak and will be keeping a close eye on how he performs in Euro 2020. So that is it for today's One Football Daily News. As always, check out all the other content that we've got here. And until next time, I'll see you all later.